Hey, what's going on? My name is Al. Grant Abbott has graciously given me permission to use one of his old videos, and that's actually what you're going to see on the right-hand side of your screen. So this will be Grant Abbott sculpting. Mine will be on the left, and I'll be in ZBrush. So let's get to it. So on the right-hand side, Grant is going to use the snake hook with a big brush size that's super important whenever you're starting out a sculpt. You don't want to start too small with those fine details. Start with a large brush size, kind of like you're doing a painting, right? Big, broad brush strokes. We're going to do the same thing inside of Blender with the snake hook brush. Now, Grant has turned on Dine Topo, which is the dynamic uh, topology. So whenever you're pulling with that snake hook brush, it's going to pull, 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 and it's going to add geometry. Super helpful when you're blocking out these large forms, like the jaw, the neck, the horns. Now I'm going to do something very similar over there inside of ZBrush. I'm using a large brush size, at least I was, to start blocking things out. Currently, I'm using that uh, damn standard brush just to get some sort of semblance of a mouth in there. And back over in Blender, you can see that Grant is doing pretty much the same thing, except with the crease tool, uh, or that draw sharp tool. He's going to crease, draw sharp, carve that in, and then that draw sharp Sharpen up some areas, make some creases, some folds, really nice for wrinkles. So on the left hand side in ZBrush, I just dropped in uh, an insert mesh tool for both the eyes. That's what I prefer to do. Now you could just insert a sphere and mirror, but I like working in symmetry for as long as possible. I use insert mesh brush. Right hand side, Grant has pretty much done what I had said there, which was drop in a sphere and Grant is gonna mirror it over once he gets that into position. Back into ZBrush, I am using clay buildup just to kind of build up those eyelids, top and bottom eyelids, and then nice little tip there, H polish at the bottom of the eyelid just sharpens that up, as well as the pinch brush. Um, for a long time, you know, when I was a, a ZBrush noob, it was so hard for me to do eyelids because I couldn't get it flat. It was always lumpy. H polish definitely helped with that. So if you haven't heard of Grant Abbott, go check out his channel, give him some love, hit that subscribe button for him. Great guy, great content. Be sure to check him out. This is a great time for me to tell you about my gum road. Several free things out there. If you haven't yet, go check out my free base meshes for Blender. Same thing where those teeth are gonna go. I'm planning out where those chunks of meat should probably be. Working on the nostril just a little bit. Now Grant is continuing with that snake hook brush. I have got to tell you, the snake hook brush is not the same in Blender as it is in ZBrush. I like the snake hook better inside of Blender. I really do. It, it behaves differently. I'm not crazy. If you have ZBrush and Blender, go try it because it's so much better inside of Blender. I said it. Back into ZBrush, I am making a tooth. Pretty simple, drop in a shape. I used the, uh, the deformers. Uh, to push and pull and just modify the shape. I use taper, flatten, bend curve, all kinds of stuff. Let's get this nice sharp looking tooth. I like the style. It kind of looks like a, I don't know, not a wolverine claw, but <laughs> some sort of knife or dagger or something. I like it a lot. Inside of Blender, Grant is doing something similar. He took more of a sculpting approach, so dropped in a sphere, stretched it down, make that tooth-like appearance and get it into position. Grant is then going to duplicate this sucker, move it around, and that is one of the, the frustrations I personally have had inside of Blender is doing things like Grant is doing. Uh, I really love Insert Mesh Brush, you all. I probably mention it every single one of these videos, but I'm looking forward to the Asset Browser. I think that's what it's called in Blender 3.0. Hopefully do something similar. And I know that there are Blender add-ons that can do Insert Mesh Brush, so still haven't taken a look. I know you have told me and told me and told me. But Grant has got those teeth in there. His eyes are looking really good. Dig in the teeth. Uh, building up some form over there. Draw sharp whenever he needs to cut in. Clay tubes. Building up some of the skull pattern or just the standard brush inside of Blender. On the left, you can see I've definitely taken a turn. Um, and just kind of did my own thing using damn standard. Put in a little bit of those wrinkles, just a little bit of depressions, making some cuts in there. And clay build up. I'm being very rough, just kind of all over the place. Backside uh, inside a ZBrush, I went ahead and masked. I really wanted that uh, neck just to be bent down. Don't forget, inside a blender, hold shift with whatever brush that you have. Do some smoothing. That's always important. And same thing over in ZBrush, I can hold shift to smooth. So working on 
the horns at the top, I'm going to mask and hold Alt to erase some of that mask and then just use Move Topological to pull some of that out. I don't think the Grant used much masking at all over here. Not a problem at all. Uh, but that's what I did for those little spikes. Working on the horns in ZBrush, just some really weird play buildup. Uh, that's one of those things, like when we started both of these sculpts, both of us were in the Valley of the Suck, but we have to push through. Was it Ryan? Uh, I can't remember his last name. Kingslian. Kingslian? I can't say his name. Whatever. Ryan ZBrush person, man. Awesome guy. Valley of the Suck. But anyways, we were there. We have both pushed through, and now both of these are looking more like Dragon. I wanted to mask out those eyes, and I think... I was busy talking, trying to pronounce Ryan's name, uh, but we missed me like doing some deformations, just playing with uh, Move Elastic. One of my favorite brushes. I think lots of people sleep on that one. It's so good. Really getting those stylized looks. Uh, but in here, I use Damn Standard, Clay Buildup, and right there in ZBrush, you saw that I had a blue cursor. That was also one of my favorite brushes. That's called the Extractor Brush. And what it does is it's basically just going to create a custom alpha based on the geometry that I already have. So Grant <coughs> went ahead and he's going to drop in some alphas or some scales, which is just a black and white image. You can, you know, left click and drag onto your mesh, pull out scales, feathers, all that fine detail, as long as you have enough resolution in your mesh. Nothing wrong with that. So for those of you who know me personally, like in real life, you'll know that I've got a problem. Well, I got many problems. One of the problems is I always play Halo on Legendary and I don't cook without, or I don't cook with a recipe because I feel like it's cheating. And a part of that is also I don't use alphas because I feel like it's cheating. Not the Grant cheated. I'm just saying in general, I know it's a problem. I know it's not cheating. Uh, I should probably see a therapist for this stuff. I know. Moving on, the extractor brush creates this custom alpha. So I am using an alpha, but it's based on the sculpts that I did. So I was able to sculpt a couple scales, grab that alpha, and then use that. For me personally, I feel like it gives it a more organic feel. It doesn't work in every situation, but for something like this, it worked great. Same kind of thing with the horns. I did a couple of striations, just a couple uh, slashes using that damn standard brush. And then I went ahead and just use the extractor brush, made some more of those details, and I feel like it just gives it a more natural look. 